Hello and welcome to Sport Africa, the BBC's weekly program fully devoted to African sport. I am Celestine Carone and here's what's coming up. 25 years and counting for Guinean football clubs in the quest for African club owners. But can one man end this trophy drought? Want to know which African country brought in the most international transfers last year or which sold the most? With the help of FIFA, we find out. She sold vegetables and defied her mother, but it all worked out for Burundi's Diana Nukiri in the end. She competed in the Olympics at only 15. I didn't want to do chores anymore. Like, I can't do chores for the rest of my life. Michael Jordan, the movie Space Jam and the Color Blue are just some of Jimmy and Abu's favorite things. But what else is the Ugandan all about? Flying through the air. And we find out who will be sitting on the throne this week in Armchair Experts. Thank you for joining us on BBC Sport Africa, coming to you from Iten, Kenya's and North Rift. This small town has a more world and Olympic champions per square kilometre than anywhere else in the world. And later in the programme, we'll get to meet one of the talents who trains here. But first, can you name the last Guinean team to be crowned African champions? If you can, well done. It is Hafia Conakry who won three titles during the 1970s. That decade was a golden era in football in Guinea, with the national team finishing runner-up during the 1976 Africa Cup of Nations. Since then, only one Guinean side has reached a major African final, nearly 25 years ago. But one man is trying to change that. Meet Antonio Suare. We want to be African champions. We want to lift this trophy. We don't want to deceive. Antonio Suare has a dream to take Haroya FC to the very top of African football. The 66-year-old may have extensive business interests such as real estate, telecommunications, media and a lottery, but football is top of his list right now. Today, I'm 90% focused on football. I have experts who take care of my companies, specialists who manage and update me. Since Suare, who is also president of the Guinea Football Federation, took charge of Haroya in 2012, the club has won 15 trophies, including winning the league in all but one of the seasons Suare has been in charge. Suare recruited so many players, Mandela, Kadim, Ndiaye, a lot of Nigerians, Ghanaians, impossible to say it all. Guinea is proud of Horoya. Every time we are champions, but now we want the league. The league. The African Champions League. We want it now. Whether you agree or not, we want it. Last year, Haroya reached the last eight of the Champions League, the furthest it has been in Africa's premier club competition. The Conakry side did win the now defunct Cup Winners' Cup in 1978, but Suare is hungry for greater things and is ready to pay. Actually, he convinced me to come here. In fact, I wasn't keen to come here, but we had a chat and he explained to me what was his target, his vision. It attracted me, and that's why I signed his contract. It's one of the clubs where we can be well paid in West Africa. You can find players we earn $1,000, $2,000, which is around 1 million CFA francs. And I can compare with Ivory Coast, I've been there before. It's 600,000, 700,000 CFA francs for the best players. We want to be African champions. We want to lift this trophy. We don't want to deceive. All these investments are not made for fun. At the bottom of Mount Kakulima, one hour away from the capital, Conakry, Antonio Suare is developing what will be the heart of the football club. For the businessman, it is more than a training centre or an academy. Around six million US dollars were spent on this project, inspired by European clubs with a brand new 15,000-seater stadium, an indoor arena and a resort hotel. 
When it will be ready functional, it will definitely match facilities you can find in Europe. Après, je sais qu'il a aussi But there is something else nice about it, because beyond these beautiful facilities, there is a will to work with quality local coaches. Soiree is not only owner of the country's biggest club, but also Football Federation president since 2017. But it doesn't see any issue with that situation. There is no conflict of interest. When I took over the Federation, I put my son as the president. Presidents of rival clubs didn't respond to our request for comment. In the meantime, no one appears to have told Haroya's website, though. On this page, dated December 2018, Suarez Senior is referred to as the club president, while on another page, also from December, his son is described as the vice president. He is not here only for reds and whites. He came here for the flags, colors, red, yellow, green. Red, yellow and green are the national colors of Guinea, which is set to host the Africa Cup of Nations in six years. One of Suarez's first acts upon taking charge was to lease a Chinese-built stadium in Conakry. This will become the national team's home one day, replacing the old September 28 stadium. I said to myself, honestly, I have to take this lease. We're playing in a stadium built in 1964. Many club presidents in Africa only enter football to boost their profile ahead of pursuing a political career. But for Soare, football, and not power, is his ultimate goal. I don't understand how you can succeed in football, business and politics. I don't believe it's possible. Businessmen are not made for politics. There are too many setbacks. I am an engineer. I'm pragmatic, I do business. And my passion, my love, my life is football. 21 years since they won the Africa Cup Winners Cup. Could this be the year that Oroya gets a second continental title? Well, they still have four stages of the CAF Champions League to navigate. Now it's time for Armchair Expert, the quiz where you get to test your sports knowledge. This week's referee, Lynn Washira, and her contestants are ready to get the ball rolling. Hello and welcome to Armchair Expert. Two players ready to battle for the throne. Let's get to meet them. Hi, my name is Marcy Haukani, or you can call me Haukani. And I hope to be this week's Armchair Expert. I hope to give this guy over here a run for his money. Kwambo, sports lover. I intend to be the Armchair Expert at the end of it all. So sit back and watch. There you had it. The contestants are ready to go. But first, a look at the rules. Round one. It's simple. 30 seconds each to answer as many questions as possible on what's going on in the sporting week. This week, we test your knowledge on European transfers and tennis. Marcy, your player one, and your 30 seconds start now. In football, who are the winners of the 2019 Asian Cup, Japan or Qatar? Qatar. Correct. Which player did Arsenal sign on loan during the winter transfer window from Barcelona? Denis Suarez. Correct. Who scored a hat-trick for Manchester City against Arsenal? Sergio Aguero. Correct. Who won the 2019 men title of Australian Open? Rafa Nadal or Novak Djokovic? Rafa Nadal. Wrong. Novak Djokovic. Which Turkish club did Chelsea winger Victor Moses join on loan in the latest transfer window? Besiktas. No, Fanabache. Who will host the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations? Uh, Egypt. You are right. And your time is up and you've gotten yourself four points and Kwambo, wow, yeah, do you think you can top that? Let's see. Your 30 seconds start now. Which team won the 2019 Super Bowl? The Patriots. Correct. Which team did Chelsea player Alvaro Morata join on loan in January? Atletico Madrid. Correct. Name any three teams competing in the Six Nations. England, France, Ireland. Correct. Who won the 2019 women title of Australian Open? Naomi Osaka. Correct. At, the, at what minute did... FC Nones observed Emiliano Sala tribute during the game with St. Etienne. Uh, pass. It's a ninth minute. In which month will the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations be held? June. Correct. It's June and July. Time is up. You've done such an amazing job right there. And you got yourself five points. Let's have a look at the scoreboard. 
It's Masi on four points and Kwambo on five points. Quite a close contest, but two more rounds to play for later in the show. Now, do you know which country in Africa spends the most on football transfers? Or which country sells more players to a fellow African nation than France does England? Well, you're about to find out if you don't as FIFA released its international transfers report for 2018 not so long ago and there are many surprises. In 2018, there were more than 16,000 international transfers across the world. In excess of $7 billion changed hands, only 41.8 million of which were spent by African teams. Some 620 African clubs were involved in the international transfers last year, with considerably fewer income in transfers, 1,503, than outgoing ones, 2,061. Africa was the most popular destination for African players, with Europe the next best, followed by Asia. In fact, sales to Asia grew the most last year, an increase of nearly 60%, which means the Asian market now accounts for roughly half the sales income to Africa that Europe does. Now, when it comes to the continent's biggest sellers, the countries leading the way are the ones you may expect. In terms of the biggest receipts from sales, Egypt may make the most, being one of only three countries to receive in excess of 10 million US dollars in transfer fees. Yet the biggest net profit goes to clubs in Morocco and Ghana. So that's the outgoing element. What about the biggest number of incoming transfers? Well here, we've got some surprises for you. Zambia tops the list, and nearly half the arrivals come from just one country. Last year, 58 players moved from DR Congo to Zambia, which is one more than the tally that moved from France to England. The DR Congo to Zambia route was actually the 13th most popular international transfer route last year. Now, let's go back to that incoming transfer list, because look at the country that's fourth. Incredibly, the number of incoming transfers to Benin has increased by nearly 2,000%. Now, which African country spends the most? Well, Egypt is a clear winner, spending more than the rest of the continent combined. Perhaps incredibly though, Libya is the fifth highest spending nation in Africa, despite the ongoing civil unrest in the country. But let's return to Africa's big spenders, because one Egyptian club dominated the African spending scene in 2018, Pyramids FC. After they were taken over by a Saudi businessman last year, the new owner brought in six players from South America, including five Brazilians, one of whom was international Rodriguinho. What this all means is that Africa spent around 30 million US dollars on players in South America, four times more than the continent did on players within Africa itself. However, this outlay on players is very much the exception and not the rule because of all the transfers involving African clubs last year, there was no fee in over 90% of the moves. A sobering thought for the future and finances of African football. Fascinating, who knew that DR Congo sold more players to Zambia than France to England? Wow. Now, athletics was her way out of the village in Burundi, but what helped shape teenage Olympian Diane Nukuri into the athlete she is? We find out after the break. You're watching BBC Sports Africa. Welcome back to BBC Sports Africa. I am Celestine Carone and we are in the distance running capital of the world, Iten in Kenya. Now, this modest town's popularity has seen many foreign athletes flock here to train. One such athlete is Diane Nukuri. The 34-year-old got into athletics so she could get a chance to leave her village in Burundi. And that she did. From selling vegetables to defying her mother so she could run and compete in the Olympics, aged 50. Etienne is nice, laid back, and of course it's really hard to train here, but I'm definitely enjoying it. Being here definitely reminds me of Burundi. I grew up in a place very similar to Iten. Growing up, it was like a happy life. Um, I, I just kind of did the chores and went to school and 
like watch the cows, milk the cows. <laughs> uh, I pretty much did everything that like a village people really like uh, do all the chores. It was really tough. I used to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. My main motiva motivation to do athletics, I didn't want to do chores anymore. It's like, I can't do chores for the rest of my life. So the first time I did it, I really liked it. And then the second time I was like, oh, I can actually go places. My mom at first wasn't really supportive of my athletic career, but of course she's the reason why I'm here because she taught me how to work hard and how to be strong. I'm well, like, okay. Let's go places and let's make more friends. And there was a race in South Africa, all African games. So we flew there, I was like, yeah. So I got on a plane. So that was like off my bucket list. And after that, I was like, oh, maybe I can just go somewhere else. I try not to go back and see what happened yesterday. I just kind of try to move on, just not dwelling on it, and just try to enjoy life. And then life, of course, is beautiful, but yet very complex. In the last couple of years, I went through some stuff when I was like down and I'm thinking, oh, my life is over. <laughs> what are those things when you're not having a good day? And then you just, you just kind of lay down and just start thinking, I'm like, I can't believe I'm actually complaining. Like, I have a really good life. Probably the best part of being a runner now. I go to these races, like major races or small races, they're like, oh, where's Burundi all these years? And I just kind of tell them, I think I, they, they heard of like, you know, tough things like wall and people killing each other. But I also, I am like always proud to just be like, oh, there's a lot more than just people killing each other or poor people there. I'm very proud of where I come from. Uh, I'm proud of my family's name, and I would like to just continue doing that even until I'm like 80, even when I'm not running. I'm always gonna be the lady from Burundi. Such determination in pursuit of a dream. Now the search for our armchair expert winner continues. Can Kwambo hang on to his lead? It's the second round over to Lynn in Nairobi. It's Masi on four points and Kwambo on five points. Let's go straight into round two. It's called Convince Me, and here is how it works. Round two, Convince Me. You each have 15 seconds to argue for or against. Two points are up for grabs. And the topic this week is Liverpool will win the 2019 Premier League title. Masi, you are agreeing and you are opposing. We start with you. Your 15 seconds start now. Convince me. All right, Liverpool will win their uh, APL this season because, first of all, they have character and so far they've been able to hold themselves up to this point. And then, secondly, they have uh, two teams. They have the B team. If their team two comes on the field, it performs as a strong. Your time is up, Mercy. Kwambo? They will not win the league because the manager is under pressure. We've seen these statistics before in 95 with Newcastle and Kevin Keegan, with Rafa Benitez and Liverpool, I think 2009. When the manager is under pressure, it will transfer to the players. You need a cool, calm manager. It's not going to happen. They will not win the Premier League. Wow, you finished before your time, Kwambo. And you put up such a good argument. Masi did that as well. And I am wondering who to give my two points. And I think, Kwambo, you did convince me and you get my two points. Let's have a look at what that has done to the scoreboard. The gap is widening. It's Masi on four points and Kwambo on seven points. See you later in the show in round three.
Masi still has a chance to try and win it in the third round. Now let's acquaint you with a star of Ugandan basketball. Jimmy Enabu has been influential in Uganda's campaign to play at the men's FIBA World Cup this year. But as we always do in Who Am I, we show you the other side of our athletes. I check with my phone. First thing. I have so many, so uh, I, I just like to generalize playing at the African level. It's a big deal for me. Michael Jordan. I think Michael Jordan is my icon. Um, he's the greatest to ever play. It's a pull-up jumper. After crossing over, take a few dribbles and then pop. Space jam. Uh, people talking too loud in my ear. Yeah. Canada is a beautiful place, so uh, that's the place I'd like to go to. Okay. Akibua. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he put us out there on the map. Uh, he, was, he was an athlete, so uh, up to now he's still big time in Uganda, so he's definitely my favorite. Favorite color, blue. The Superman, I love flying. Flying through the air. Um, I'm not too big on video games, so um, the ones I used to play, uh, Mario. <laughs> I like Hercules. Uh, this is still old school, but uh, Hercules, uh, the adventurous guy with all his swords and killing all those evil guys. Love is everything. Love is um, being together. Love is sharing. So being here is love. So love is everything good. The late John Akibua was truly a hero of Ugandan sport, winning the country's first Olympic gold medal in 1972. And now, who will be this week's Amcha Expert winner? We've been building up to this moment, the deciding round. It's Masi on four points and Kwambo on seven points as we start a round three and here are the rules. Round three, the quick fire decider. 45 seconds to push up your score. Remember, shout your name before you answer or you lose out. 45 seconds starting now. Which tennis player is known as the king of clay? Kwambo, Nadal. Correct. Who are the hosts of the hosts of 2019 World Athletics Championships, Dubai or Doha? Masi. Doha. Correct. In which American sport would you use a catcher's meat? Kwambo. Baseball. Correct. What does T and F stand for in athletics? Kwambo. Track and field. Correct. Which is the last marathon major of the 2019 calendar year? Berlin, New York or Chicago? Kwambo. Berlin. Chicago. Wrong. New York. Stephen Curry plays for NBA. Which team? Mas. Lakers. Golden State Warriors, which sport is played on a green cloth? Asi. Football. Bowling. It's a snooker and time is up, guys. It's Masi on one point and Kwambo, you got yourself three points on this round. Let's have a look at the scoreboard. It's Masi on five points and Kwambo on ten points and that means that Kwambo, you're this week's armchair expert. Come have a seat at the throne. Congratulations. It's warm enough, by the way. Don't be afraid to be a winner. How does it feel? First of all, it feels good, but you know you have to come in in style. You just don't rush to the armchair. That is amazing. <laughs> you too can be a winner. See you next week. Leading from start to finish, congratulations, Kwambo. Well, that's all we had for you this week on the show. Remember, you can always reach us on social media. And if you'd like more sports stories, go to the BBC Sport Africa website. From Iten, I am Celestine Caronay. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.